Seeking God's will in your prayer is to pray with an open heart. How do you arrive at praying with an open heart? Number one, make your plans, but do not put a stamp on your plans. Scripture says in Proverbs 16 verse 1, Go ahead and make all the plans you want, but it's the Lord who will ultimately direct your steps. Now, I love this scripture in other translations. It says that the plans of the heart is of man, but the answer of the tongue is of God. The way that came to me in interpretation is that when you plan in your heart, you have to bring it up to your tongue to speak it. Which means, this speaks to the spirit of faith that the scripture says, that the spirit of faith is, I believe and I speak. So which means, I believe, I make these plans, I believe in God for it, then I speak it to him, which is, I present it to him. I'm not putting a stamp on these plans, I'm looking for an answer from God. The answer may not be favorable, but it will make me be in his will. Now, At the Garden of Gethsemane, you talk about Christ when he was about to go to the cross. Himself, the plans in his heart is, Father, let this cup pass by me. But then, not as I will, your will be done. He had this in his heart. He brought it up to the Father to submit and align. So it means for us, To be in the will of God, it is to have an open heart in the place of praying that you say, I have these plans in my heart, and you tell it to God. And let God give you the answer of the tongue, which means you do not have the final say, the final word in the plans that you make. You allow your heart to be open that God will have the final say in whatever plans you have, whatever plans you're making, whatever plans you have made. Be it the plans about the spouse you want to marry, the time you want to marry, which is to tell you do not put a timeline on God because God's time is the best. If you put your time in God's hand, he is the best manager of time because he created time and he's in control of time. And the reality is that you and I are subjective to time, which is we are almost running up against time. That You feel like I'm getting older and time is not on my side. But you see with God, time is always on God's side because he can turn something that was meant to happen in 10 years to happen in a day. I'm not just talking about happening in a year. Scripture says that a day is as a thousand years to the Lord, which means God can compress a thousand years experience to happen in one day. How powerful he is. Number two, when we talk about aligning with the will of God or seeking the will of God in prayer or you having an open heart in prayer, it's about consent. The scripture says before you even pray, I have given you an answer. And that came to me and I was like, if scripture says before you ask, I hear and I will answer you, which is in Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24, it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. If this is what scripture says, then why do I have to pray? Because before I call, he answers, he hears me, he knows the thought of my heart. Why do I have to pray? The word is consent. God wants you and I to give him consent for every single thing that he wants to do in our life. You have to come to a place that you know that God needs your consent. God won't just barge into your life. He is a gentleman. He will not invade your life without your permission. He will not invade your life without you giving him consent. So you praying is as saying, God, I give you consent. God, I give you the permission to bless me. That is why check through the landscape of scripture and the experience that Jesus had with all the people that he healed, all the people that he helped. Scripture says in Acts 10 that he went from place to place doing good, healing them that were oppressed of the devil. When it comes to healing and those things that he did to help the people that were of sane mind, he will ask, what do you want me to do for you? Clearly, the man is blind. Jesus can see that the man is blind. Why do we have to ask him, what do I do for you? 
because he needs his consent. Clearly, the man is lame and he sees that this man is lame and can't walk. He still asks, what do you want me to do for you? It says nothing to me but consent. That is what our prayer is. That when we bring our request to God, we are giving God consent to bless, to bless us. We are giving God consent to do good in our lives. Number three is the word choice. When you pray, this one, I love it. It is not a result of, it's a burden. Why do I have to ask God every time? God knows what I need. He should just do it. And the reality is that God wants you to exercise the power of your choice. I don't know if you get that, but when I got this, it was beautiful to me. Some of us don't like asking people for help because you, you don't want that, you know, situation whereby you ask someone for help and they kind of disappoint you. You don't want to feel disappointed. You don't want to feel like you, you are kind of disturbing someone or whatever is the mindset that you have about, I don't like asking people for help. But when it comes to God, God is your daddy. You have the authority, the right to go to him, to ask him for help. Why do you ask him for help? It's because you are helpless without him. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So then he would provide for you without you asking. Of course, he does that already. Because there are so many things in your life that you do not have to ask God before he does it. He does it without you asking. He does it without you saying a word. It means that he has been providing, but there are some specific things that he needs you to exercise the power of your choice for him to do it for you. Scripture says in Proverbs 16, 3 and 9, Commit your works to the Lord, submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and guidance. A man's mind plans his way as he journeys through life, but the Lord directs his steps and establishes them. So when you come to God, you're not just coming to God to say, oh, why do I have to ask God? You're coming to God because you are in need of help. Jesus made a statement in Matthew chapter 9 and said, it is the sick people that need a doctor. Which means if you say you don't need a doctor, it means you're also saying you're not sick. If you don't ask God for help, it means you don't need help in that particular area that you say, why do I have to pray? Why should I always pray about this? Why do I always have to take this to God? Why can't God just do this for me without me asking? Now, this is your answer because God wants you to exercise the power of your choice. It is very important. Lastly, Praying to God and asking for God's will is as a result of God training you to have confidence in asking of him. God is training you when you ask of him to build your confidence. Now I will give you a short story. In my family, I have been the one that is bold and daunting kind of because when it comes to talking to my daddy, it takes a lot for my siblings to go to my dad and talk to him and want to get something from him. They, they are kind of like, they are afraid. They don't have that boldness. They don't have that confidence. So they would always tell me what to tell daddy that they want. And whenever I would go to my dad and tell them, this is what this person says he needs, he would ask me, are you their mouthpiece? Are you their mouthpiece? This I can subjectively say do not wait for people to pray for you pray on your own and build the confidence with your daddy because i always did go to him i built a kind of confidence that i can approach him at any time i will not be afraid that he will beat me whenever he's eating i can go sit down there and start talking to him he listens and he hears me he's my daddy I may not know the right time to go to him, but I will always go to him because there is a boldness, there is a confidence. And that is why scripture admonishes you and I that you can come 
to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need which means the more you ask of god you are building confidence with him you're building a track record and history with him so that you know that you can always come and ask and he's not angry that you ask he's not chiding you why didn't you come at so 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 time why didn't you pray by 12 a.m why didn't you pray by 4 a.m why didn't you pray at this specific hour because you did not pray by this hour maybe i'm not going to answer you it does not say so but it says whenever you call i will answer you now when you apply this which is i will run through it make your plans but do not finalize or put a stamp on it have an open mind with it and submit it to god secondly give god consent to help you through your prayer thirdly exercise the power of your choice by going to him every time of need to ask and fourthly build the confidence with god that you can approach the throne of grace whenever you need help and he's going to help you. And I pray that these steps and this video will help you in your praying and seeking God's will for your life. That you would seek his will and walk in his will and get to obtain all the plans that he has for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am Owen and this is my YouTube channel. I will seize this opportunity to tell you if you have not yet subscribed please hit that subscribe button, that red button there. It is free of charge, no cost at all. So hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and share it with someone, with your friend, with your family member that you know needs to hear this. God bless you. Bye-bye.